Rolling, rolling, rolling down the river, rolling down the <sighs> river. Are you okay? No, dude, I'm running on just Gatorade and self-belief at the moment. Did you get a Gatorade without me? Oh, you've got a Gatorade down there? Yeah. Dude, I'm running off nothing but corn kernels. <laughs> we were in the car before going to get breakfast, uh, Tyler, Alex and I. Yeah. Uh, Alex is opening the shows on this New South Wales leg. And Alex just goes, oh, man, I don't know why I feel so shit. And I'm like, what do you mean? We went home, had beers, had Maccas and went to bed at 4 a.m. And you're trying to identify the part of that. Like, <laughs> at so what point do you just have to use common sense and be like, oh, I'm treating my body like a fucking bin? I heard you went to bed at 5 a.m. Yeah, it was 4. I don't think he didn't realize what time it was. Oh, I went okay. to bed at 4, 11 a.m. Damn, you looked at the time and you were like, what time is it? I need yeah, to I know went, how much sleep I need. Yes. Yeah, fair. I, I do that. I do it so I get eight hours and I made sure I stayed in bed till after 12, 11 a.m. Mm, I had a zombie dream for the first part of my night, which was horrible. Zombie dreams are always the worst dreams because it's like you're going to get chased. It's going to get tiring. It sucks. I never think about zombies. Really? Zombies <laughs> don't scare the shit out of you? They are absolutely They're by not- far my my... The most terrifying monster in my real. brain. Huh? They're not real. Yeah, but if they were real, like if a monster or if, if something was real or like if a pandemic thing was real, like getting zombified, that that it was zombies would have to be the worst. No. Well, what do you, what would you think? What would be the worst monster? Well, the, no, no monsters scare me because they're not real. Like no, I, what I think <laughs> is more scary is like a truck. Do you ever have thought when you're driving along this, this like, highways and the trucks fly past you on the other lane yeah they just veered into you or just die instantly do you ever have that thought i all constantly because that does happen yeah yes that's a real life thing that happens yeah so i'm scared of real things yeah but what i'm saying is if something that isn't real came to life what would you most be scared of (sighs) that definitely not zombies not zombies Dude, no, Godzilla. Like, what the fuck? Like, no, Godzilla. Li- you dude, said anything. Yeah, but if you get stepped on by Godzilla, like, you're done. Done, right? Zombies would, like, you like could imagine potentially getting eaten survive. by teeth. You could potentially survive a, do- a zombie I don't. Apocalypse. I wouldn't want to, though, and I, but I wouldn't want to die by death by zombie. Terrifying. Imagine if zombies being real would be <sighs> the most terrifying thing ever. That would suck. Okay, but like the, there's more chances of survival. I just take my odds. It's just mm. like if you said anything, all right, I'm scared of Decepticons more than zombies. If Megatron came here and was like, we just want Luke and no one else, I'd be like, fuck that. Give me a zombie any day. I'm not nah. fighting Megatron. That's the thing. You don't have to fight. They just go squish, done. You know, easy death. Easy death. Yeah, but you said if you could be scared of anything, it's like – Zombies wouldn't even crack my top 10. That's crazy, man. Zombies are so clearly my number one. I'd be more scared of like, you know the movie Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs where there's just food flying out of the sky? No. Imagine you just getting hit by a burger that's come from the sun. I say, let me be squished. Let me let me be killed by a giant falling pancake. That That's how I want to go out. <laughs> That's, I want to look up. Just maple one syrup day, to the brain. Oh, dude, one day I want to walk outside, look up, see a giant pancake and go, it's been a hell of a life. Slam. Would you open your mouth at the last minute to try and get a quick bite? Like for it kills you? Like, uh. Yeah, just in case a little part of me is still alive, then I'm like, oh, I've got that syrupy goodness. You Hopefully know, they put extra butter on it. So I it think starts. out of... Any food yeah. that a big pancake would make the best blanket. Yeah. For sure. What, absolutely. Like a, a nice fresh toasty one. But in summer, I'd rather like a lettuce. Yeah. Big sheet of lettuce would be like a good if it's sweaty. No, because lettuce kind of smells. It doesn't smell nice, you know? Yeah. I would be like a cold piece of bread, like a thin thin crust oh, no. piece of bread. Like a, yeah, like uh, a taco wrap, like pita <gasps> bread would make oh, a good blanket. A tortilla. Tortilla, but it's kind of rough. 
Pancakes are soft and squishy. No, t- tortillas, like fresh tortillas, so yeah. soft. Anyway, guys, welcome back to Weekend oh, yeah. Ready with Luke and Meg. <laughs> Comment below of what you, what food you think would make the best blanket. And also what <laughs> food you would want to be squished by the most. <laughs> and, and, and what are you scared, most scared of? <laughs> Three questions that we've posed already. And, um, Dog shit. Um, should I spin the wheel before we go into anything? Yeah, because I can tell you about a terrifying dream I had. Oh, really? Yeah, I just always have dreams that like people just fucking get up and leave my show and I bomb for an hour. Oh, yeah. But well, Reese also had a very similar dream to that on the same night that you had that dream, right? Yeah, now I'm scared. Yeah, now it's like a prophecy. The prophet, There's a prophecy on this tour and I'm terrified for tomorrow night in It was Tamworth. in Tamworth, wasn't it? No, the, well, no. Well, both I'll, of I'll you had a dream why. of Tamworth. Okay. Uh, so last week was a turn up. Did I, I, we were at shows. What was so last week? I was weekend? definitely pumped up. Yeah, well, what we, where were we last weekend? I don't know. Oh, you know, I couldn't remember all the... Oh, no, nah, that sounds bad. I'm not going to say that. What? Oh, we were in Port Mac. Oh, that was awesome. Yeah, Port Mac yeah. was so good. No, this sounds bad. No, I'm not going to say that. No, you've got to say it now. No, because I don't want to make um, someone who maybe did come to one of those shows feel like it wasn't special. You them. have to say it. Uh, there's <laughs> no, Where was I don't want to. Where was this? We were trying to figure out, like, name all the places that we've done shows at on yeah. this tour in the last two weeks mm. and in the car the other day, and yeah. we left out three. Three of them? We just forgot about three of them. Okay. Can you prompt my memory? Where but was now I can remember okay. them all. First, so the first show uh, was no, in Albury. Why are we doing this? It, because... No one wins here. Why? We offend an entire town. Okay, fine. Fair enough. Yeah. I forgot Nara and Golden. Oh, and Griffith. I erased it from my brain. Oh, yeah, Griffith. <laughs> oh, Griffith was good, though. Wasn't it? Uh, yeah. Next topic. Next topic, new topic, which is the wheel. Pass. Spin the, pass. Uh, I played the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was fun. I, no, nah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to spin the wheel. Ready? We are. One, two, three. Spin. Spin, 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 spin. It is going to be another, another turn, up. turn up. What's this weekend? Turn up, turn up, turn up. Where are we? We are oh, in New No Dubbo Dubbo <laughs> yeah. and then Penrith. <laughs> yeah. Yay, Penrith is sick. Oh, so is Dubbo. Penrith um, the show last year was so good. Dude, they were awesome. That was awesome. Western Sydney, something about it. Yeah, it's just dude. chaotic, you know. There's something about being in the presence of a hog's breath cafe that gets people <laughs> G'd up. Love it. And I can't explain what that is. <laughs> but uh yeah, that Western Sydney's sick. Um yeah, the tour has been going great. What was I about to say? About the shows or no, about like Griffith? No, I had like a story. No, we were moving on from that, weren't we? Yeah, I played the fifth Yeah, yeah played we played the fifth. The fifth that. That's the right. Yeah. Um, just like it's such a blur, I guess is what I was trying to say. Yeah. We we're in a new place every single day. It's going, it's just fast. It's so fast paced. It's going so quick. I looked at the tour dates and I think we're almost at the end of this leg. We'll be almost a quarter of the way through. The, all the dates, yeah. you know what I mean, already. And I'm just like, what the hell? Like it felt like we were just in the UK and I was just shooting the special. That's because we were. I was just doing the cheers to that tour. We literally were. I know. <laughs> it's uh, wild. It's, it's mind boggling. Like I I think it's also because it, we do the same routine every day. So we get up, we leave early, we drive for ages, then we get to the accommodation, get ready, go straight to the like venue and show. We just recycle and repeat that every single day. Plus, then you're adding in work hours, so like trying to get shit done during that, mm. which is insane. It's bloody chaos, it's mate. It's bloody chaotic, isn't it? But uh, like, look, <laughs> I'm I'm doing great considering. I actually have been feeling really good during like the tour, whereas like I was quite sick when we went to like La last year when we did the New Zealand tour. Mm. So I was a little bit worried because that was the last like big leg that I had done like with other people and stuff. And I was was pretty sick, not feeling great. We've all been going down one by one. One by one. Everyone's been getting genuinely sick. Uh, He he joined us. Jack went home. Did you say Vibu? Yeah. Yeah. He went down first. Then I got it. I got a really sore throat, started coughing. Then Reese uh, got it. And now we've just kind of been taking in turns of who's dead and who's not. Have we... uh, told everyone that we've 
hired Vibu? Uh, no. Oh, well, we've got a new team member. Yes. Everyone. Doesn't have too much to do with the podcast, but, no. you know, we're all a big family here, aren't we, mate? I would – actually, uh, I have – the my one concern is – Okay, no, I didn't consider <laughs> myself the most handsome <laughs> member of Keg. I didn't, right? I didn't. I didn't know who was. It was either Reese or I, as the two most handsome members of Keg. All I know now is mm-hmm. we are definitely not the two most handsome members of Keg. Vibu gets hit on in the meet and greet so much. He I... takes the photos, like we do the VIP meet and greets and stuff, and. The man. Last night. Last night a girl asked for his Instagram and she was so like not low key about it. Yeah. And he's got a girlfriend. He has a partner. Yeah. Right. But dude, this man's jawline is unbelievable. He also dresses him. Like, so this is how I would usually, I don't want to say. Vibu was like team. six foot three. Looks like he permanently has that Chad Snapchat filter on his yeah. face. He's a Chad. Yeah. Yeah. But he's smart. Which is crazy because that those two things don't usually go together. You don't usually put like Chad and then brain together. Yeah, but yeah, pretty cool to see a, a team member. Yeah, like I that. think Blake actually used to fancy himself as the most handsome member of the crew. No, nah, he was he's the cutest. Yeah, he's the most uh, one likely to be given a show bag for free yes. or most likely to be given a lolly at the doctor for being a good boy. Yeah, I reckon not the handsomest. Reese has got the stash. He's maintained. Okay. Tyler's got the fashion. <laughs> what? What? Oh, you think Tyler's the most fashionable? Yeah, for sure. For what sure. What do you mean? I bought new high top vans yesterday. You did do that. And then I accidentally, <laughs> I accidentally slammed you for it. Cause then I, he bought, <laughs> 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 Tyler's, Tyler's now walked out in his Crocs <laughs> short shorts and, <laughs> White you just got voted most fashionable in the team and you're wearing <laughs> a white shirt, basketball shorts and Crocs. <laughs> Slay. Isn't that Slay. fucked up that I can't dispute it? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of fire though. It's fire. Um, yeah, so Luke come, comes home the other day and he goes, I bought these these high top uh, which vans. Which you told me were fire at the I, shops. They, they were. They were fire. And then for some reason I was, I just, I was like, oh, I don't know what new shoes to get because I have bought some shoes, which I'll bring up in a second, but I didn't know what new shoes to get. And then I was like, oh, I don't, he was like, oh, why don't you get Vans? And I was like, oh, like, I don't want to because all of the 12 year old girls are wearing them now and I don't want to look like a, like a, you know, infant. Mm. And then I look at his face and he's like, oh, just shocked. And I was like, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to say that you have the fashion of a 12-year-old girl. I meant that just for me. It was me, the girl's version of it, the guy's version. Great for you. Good on you. Well, Reese also wears Vans. So does Alex. All right. Exactly. This- Guys can wear them. I mean, I just don't want to no. look like a girl. I don't know. No. I'm fucked up. The three of us dress like 12-year-old girls. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. Reese looks like a 12 year old um, girl who went through puberty, like (laughs) in a real hectic way. (laughs) Puberty hit hard. It hit really hard. Um, Yeah. yeah, But the the new shoes that I've currently got, look, I've, I've turned into a 50 year old mum, Luke. uh, I was shocked when you told me this. I went into the stores and I was like, I need something comfortable for work that will look similar to the white shoes that I already have. And I went in and the only thing that it was acceptable and very comfortable, very comfortable <laughs> was these sketches. Meg has purchased sketches. I got sketches. She's like, they're practical, they're comfortable. And when I'm on my feet all day, they make me feel good. They're good for, <laughs> good for me lower back. You know what I found out as well? My grandma has the same shoes. <laughs> Dude, my mum owns those shoes as well. Shaz wears sketches. Shaz wears sketches. My mum wears sketches. Maybe they were just ahead of the curb. They, yeah. Maybe they were just pushing the boundaries fashion wise and you're only just catching up. Yes. I would love your, to. Your think grandma of it like knew that. something that no one else does, maybe. Yeah. Well, the Is last. Ske- are sketches cool? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think. 
think they are. I like them. I think they look great and they're very comfortable. Definitely sounding like a 50-year-old mum right now. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know what I want to come back? And I don't know if I – they would have to come back in a big way because, I God, I'd, I miss Dunlop volleys, man. Dunlop oh, volleys were just the, volleys. the goat shoe – when you're a kid, mm. the blue ones, there's green ones. It was like a tennis shoe, but yeah. it was casual. It was affordable. Yeah, they were just comfortable. A, they were terrible for your feet. They were comfy though. They were so, so comfy. So comfy. So, so comfy. Make volleys great again. <laughs> Do you remember when it was a trend <laughs> for girls where we used to wear the leggings with the volleys, but the we used to grab the – like the back of the leggings and slip them underneath our heel and mm. then put the volleys over the top yeah. of it. So it would just be like leggings into volleys. <laughs> into with volleys. Those. No socks, no socks. Now the trend is like have the socks. you can yeah have the socks over the top mm. of them. Um, I used to own <laughs> camo volleys when I was in grade four. Camo. Yeah, dude. I didn't even have feet for Bro. a year. You were just like they disappeared. Nothing, <laughs> nothing yeah. but ankle. They used to call me no foot <laughs> in grade four. Now, uh, one thing that I did want to bring up on mm-hmm. this week's episode is there's something so good, and I and I, I will be honest, I cannot tell you all the stories because I just can't be talking smack about people. But whenever we get yeah. to each venue on this tour, you speak to like the the staff, the crew, the sound guys. At each venue, and, and in conversation, it usually comes off of like, "Oh, we, who who are, who else has come through?" And often they just tell me about the other comedians who's come through. Oh, yeah, Carl Barron's come through, and blah blah blah. You know, Arj Bark has been through, right? You, you get the classics. Ross Noble's always coming through, yeah. and then you get some stories that they tell you like diva stories of what other artists have either requested or done wrong, or how other staff have so how other performers have treated the staff members and. God damn, if it's not the juiciest thing. Because people come to me and go, at the end of the night, they go, by the way, thank you so much for being so chill. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And they're like, oh, we got told with this other guy who came through that uh, we weren't allowed to look him in the eye. And if you made eye contact with him, you were to look at the floor or not. What? And it's like, what an obscene thing. Like, And these people are doing like a 500 seater in orange. It's not like they're like a fucking <laughs> rock star. They're, <laughs> they're not, not Harry Styles. Yeah. I'm not performing at venues that like yeah. rock stars are doing. I'm performing at like regional art centers. <laughs> 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 like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's like these That's people. Crazy. The, the, a great one I heard recently. I won't say the venue that happened at, but uh, it was so, this one is good because it's just so funny to me that the way like country people just don't give a shit how famous you are. And I love that. Like you can be the biggest, you know, you can think you're the shit or whatever. Nothing will bring you down to earth more than just meeting some regional dude that works in a theater. That's just like, fuck off. Like <laughs> you with your bullshit. I love them. They're like, a, we're at a venue recently and they were like, Oh, you know, they're like, Oh, you guys are going to be heading out after the show. We're like, Oh yeah. What time do you want us out? They're like, Oh, you guys are finished early. Honestly, as long as you don't stay here till 2am, we're fine. And I was like, who stayed around to 2 a.m.? They're like, oh, some people have a big party in the green room and apparently we just have to wait around until they finish up. I'm like, no. I'm like, name names. And they're like, <laughs> Bernard Fanning from Powderfinger. <laughs> <laughs> apparently, <laughs> at this regional arts center once just had a party. I think they said- In the green room. I think they said they were smoking in the green room that it took three weeks to get to opening oh, the doors of getting the smoke out. That's why they kept asking me. They were like, oh, do your boys smoke, vape, you know, do any weed before the show? And I was like, oh no, they don't smoke. They were like, you can tell us. And wh- I was like, they don't- they don't smoke. And why would I like n- not tell you about anyway. that? Like what? <laughs> that makes so much sense. So funny. So then they were just like, oh yeah, we had to wait around till one thirty for, and, and I was like, and then you know, I tried to make a joke. I was just like, they, they were like, you know, I'm, I'm like, hey, when Bernard Fanning and the lads, you know, you w- want to have a party. I'm like, it's Powderfinger. You got to let them. They're one of the goats. And then, and then they go, no, wasn't Powderfinger. It was Bernard Solo stuff featuring Casey Chambers. And I was like, <laughs> nah, fuck, get them out. Like, that's not okay. If you bring the band back together, what? you can have a party backstage in my venue. <laughs> you sing My Happiness Live and Passenger and These yeah. Days followed by Sunsets. 
dude, party till fucking 3 a.m. in the green room. Yeah. Hey, Bernard, it's your solo stuff. We're closing. <laughs> Leave. Leave. Get hey, Bernard. I'm sorry, brother. I just want to wish you well. Get the fuck <laughs> out. All right? I love Bernard Fanning, but that's that's some diva shit, yeah, just yeah. not leaving. That sucks. And then, Why would you not go back to your Airbnb? And then apparently to get them out because they wouldn't leave, the <laughs> venue pulled the fire alarms. <laughs> Do you think they like called up the fire brigade ahead of time? Like, hey guys, just letting you know, we're about to pull the fire alarm. Don't come. We're just yeah. trying to get this guy out. Yeah, like you might see smoke, but it's just uh, Bernard Fanning's tobacco smoke leaking out the <laughs> venue door. It was a tiny green that's room as well. I, that's what I mean. It was Dude, so small. There was no way. That lamest place to have a party. It would have been like two people. It, it would have just, just been, been Bernard and Casey Chambers. Yeah. Just having a dart for three hours. That's so freaking weird. But yeah, there was. There's been some other ones where, like, I can't say the artist names just because you know some people are in the same industry as I am. Mm. Some there was some people, you know, put it this way: if I ever meet Bernard Fanning now after I've told that story, I don't. That, I I don't care. Why you said a thing I love that Powderfinger. They're actually one of my favorite bands. Yeah, but. But I, that doesn't change. Hey, dude. Hey, man. Leave. Leave. Go to the pub or something. There, but there was a pub next door to the venue Literally that was go open. Anywhere. I know. Um, anyway, sorry. It's been it's been a, a, a real treat and delight just getting such juicy goss what? from all the venues. And they talk yeah. mad smack, which is why I'm so like. I, I always make a point of being lovely to everyone at the venue. Yeah. Because I don't want you know, Ross Noble to hear about Lou Kidgel, you know what I mean? Or like, <laughs> no, by the way, not that I've heard bad things about Ross Noble. No, actually, no, 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 no. But I'm just saying he's the one who he's, he, he's posted always everywhere in the places I do. So he's going to come there next. And yeah, I don't want the next person in there to also, think. You're also a very like down to, to earth like guy. And, and the people that they were like kind of not complaining, but like who were saying that they, they weren't, the nicest people to the yeah. staff and stuff. A lot of them were from America. Yeah. And I think it's another thing where because they're in regional Australia, they don't understand that it's really big in the American culture, specifically in that like LA, California kind of yeah. places, that they're, they come off as being more arrogant. And whereas Australians like Australians, yeah, Australians are very much like, Nah, it's one of us and all of us, you know, like we're, we're yeah. fucking together. There was one, I won't say the name of the person, but there was one where the the artist was trying to film. They were like, oh, the artist was out the back trying to film a video in our parking lot, right? Mm. And <laughs> then he was filming it in front of some guy's car park. And this is a public car park behind the venue that's like also near a Coles and shit. So people are just parking there to do their daily the, business. Yeah. And – then someone approaches their own car. is like, hey, man, keep us move. I was trying to get out. And then the celebrity, the artist was like, um, excuse me, I'm trying to film a video right now. And then refused to move. In front of and the then person's the, car. The old bloke from the country town just goes, mate, I don't know who the fuck you are, <laughs> but can you get out of the way of my car? And the artist apparently then went back inside the venue and went, I need to get security to get rid of this person. And the venue was like, this isn't even part of our venue. Like we can't kick someone out of a public car park. You're being it's, unreasonable. It's their car. Yeah, I know. He's being unreasonable. What the f- – that's insane. Mm. That's crazy. So that was a good one. And then they were just like, yeah. God, and I then, love Australia. And I was, like, I was like, what happened? Did you call security? And they go, fuck no. <laughs> they were just like – they're like, we just let him go. Yeah. They're like, I didn't, we didn't care. Fuck yeah. I'm I'm so with them on that. That's it. So that is though. literally it, insane. It's my favorite though that when you go to these towns, like they don't indulge shitty behavior like that. No. From artists. They just like get the fuck out of our town. Because no one's like better. There's no like no. there's no like hierarchy system here. It's like you're on the same fucking level. If you you if you try to be above another Aussie, mm. particularly in a regional town, they will bring you back down so oh. quickly. Yeah. That will pull you back down. Yeah, yes. The ones with, yeah. So Grafton was quite literally the most exciting and fun place to be before the show. And it was, so like I. It was in this like 1920s old theater cinema. Yes. 900 seater. Yeah. We talked about this on the Patreon episode, but it's 
so fascinating to me. This town has twenty to twenty five thousand people living there. That's their population. Mm. Twenty five thousand people. I think it's just over twenty thousand. Mm. Someone told me they have a nine hundred seat theater. So if you fill it. It's almost 5% of the population <laughs> coming to see your show. And yeah. I half filled it, which yeah. means I got 2.5%. That's massive That's of a, their entire population. That's a crazy ratio. If I sold 2.5% of Melbourne's population, dude, I'd be doing an arena. Crazy, <laughs> crazy. It'd be so good. Um, yeah, so I the way that, that my job works is I set up in the foyer of whatever venue that we're in. And once I set up, I basically have to stay there the entire time just because we've got so many boxes, so many things that you can't just pack it up and then reset it up during the show. So I sell pre and post show as well. Um, and I they gave me a bucket of popcorn and a giant drink and I was just sitting there eating the popcorn, watching as just so many things happened in that foyer that was so funny. <laughs> like everyone was like working and stuff. It, w- w- like I was just chatting with some of the staff and then this guy walks in wearing short shorts, like these bright pink thongs and like this ch- T-shirt that was like five sizes way too small for him. Mm-hmm. And he walks in and everyone goes, oh, fuck off, Tony. Get the fuck out. And I'm like – oh my god and he's laughing at them like ah oh, shut up you sluts and it was like this guy looked so like manly and like just you would never expect the voice that came out of his mouth to come out i was like what is happening so these places are just sitcoms immediately one of the boys it's like cheers oh, dude. like when they're in the bar and then a main character walks in so one of the boys literally fucking bolts from one end of like the the place behind this like slide up poster mm. that they had and just hides and he she, he's like looking at me like don't tell him I'm here don't tell him I'm here and I'm like what and everyone's going oh what what do you fucking want now Tony what do you want and he's like oh, I just need a refund for this and they're like oh who is it today who is it today and I'm thinking like what do you mean who is it today like what is what the fuck is happening and then I'm like talking with this like staff member, I was like, what's happening? Why are you hiding? And he's like, oh, uh, Tony has multiple personality disorder. And one of his personalities is this really flamboyant gay guy that comes in for a refund every like, usually every Tuesday. Sometimes he walks in a little bit earlier, but he tries to fuck the staff, this like staff member. He tries to like hug him and kiss him and stuff. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I don't want to talk to him. I'm going to get stuck talking to him for like three hours. Don't tell him I'm here. No one tell him I'm here. And then one of the staff members goes, oh, such and such is just like, is behind there if you want to go say hi. So this guy walks over and he's like, oh, where are ya? Where is my boy? Where's my boy? And this kid's like, fuck off, Tony. I don't want to talk to you today. Runs across the other place. Tony starts like flamboyantly running across the, the foyer. And then he's like, ah, that's okay. I'll get him next week, you cheeky bugger. And then takes his refund and just walks out. I was just sitting there eating my popcorn like, what is happening? Oh, the perfect like snack for that event happening as well. It was so juicy. I was like, what the – what? So then the show starts, right? And like might I add, there's so much stuff happening. The ve- the the staff in that venue was so funny they were as great. well. They were so great, so helpful. They were so lovely as well. It was just like such a good vibe to set pre-show. And during the show, uh, multiple like people were coming out and they were like either falling down the stairs, slurring their words, and no shit, we had to figure out which ones were drunk. And which ones were not with it? Disabled. Disabled. And it was so hard. We had no idea. We were like, are they? Are they not? Like, how do we figure this out? Or are they both? It's a game that we, and this sounds horrible because it is, but it's true. And I saw that from having to say it. It's D or D in regional towns. D or D. Drunk or disabled becomes this nightly game at the show when deciding to pick people because yeah. the security just stare at these people and they're just like, 
can't tell and, and often man if you get because it, it's a thing where if you get it wrong you can't get it wrong there's a you're a bad person yeah you can't get it wrong you can't fuck that up no because the moment that you fuck that up then that's like you're ableist you know and you can't do that so it's like what do we do but those anyway, venues are right well it though. was it was just like so entertaining it was the most entertaining place that i've literally ever been to it was so much fun um, There's people doing meth in the car park as well before the show. Yeah, the guys were very lovely. They were coming out with me to get all of the gear, refused to leave me alone. Yeah. Very nice. You were getting your gear, they were doing their gear. Yeah. A lot of gear going on. A lot of gear getting thrown around, guys. Hello, we are just interrupting this episode because I wanted to show you my brand new jacket. No, that, that, that is not why For we are For audio listeners, I look like a hipster mountain man. Yes, he does. And that's not why we're interrupting. I look like a sexy lumberjack. You no, know, no sexy lumberjack it's here. Woolen. It's trendy. It's happening. It's now. The point is. This <laughs> isn't sponsored, no, by the way. No. <laughs> this sounds like an ad. I'm just excited about my new jacket. All right. Now let's tell them the actual reason. We had to record a shorter episode uh, this week because we had to run off to do a show. Uh, so the episode didn't go for half an hour. We have decided to put in uh, a snippet from this week's Patreon only Luke and Meg podcast. Yes, uh, that you can find online. And if you like it, then you can go <laughs> go sign up for it. <laughs> Really good ad. Well done. Go sign up for the Luke and Meg Patreon if you enjoy this little snippet. No, we didn't tell yes. the story. You left everyone a cliffhanger. The thing that I said last week was I almost got abducted and I will tell you next week on the podcast. Okay. <laughs> and we left him on a cliffhanger. Right. Yeah. So pretty much I was on my way to get like my facial done and this was like 4 or 5 p.m. at night. So – it's not really dark. It's in green, like Greensboro, which is not an area that this stuff would usually happen in and whatnot. No. So I wasn't – and, like, I'd been there, like, a thousand times. So nothing had ever happened. I was just, like, used to the area and whatnot. Anyway, I parked my car and uh, it's in this undercover, undercover parking lot. And to get through – you can go through this little like archway thing. And so I was walking towards this like archway thing to to go outside and I see this like guy literally flying like down the street on this bike that was four times too small for his body. And he starts like riding full pelt towards me. And I was like, oh, he'll just like slow. He kind of like started to kind of slow down. So I was like, oh, he'll just slow down and I'll walk through and he'll like, come through as well anyway I get closer as I'm literally just about to walk into this like archway this guy's like locked eyes on me and he looks fucking crazy and he jumps off the moving bike grabs it by like the handlebars and just throws it like at me and I like jump out of the way and I'm like fuck no no not today not today I know this like story is super traumatic and actually horrible yeah but can we acknowledge just quickly that sort of sounds like a really cool dismount. It was a cool dismount. Like, did he have, like, was he just mid pedal and mid-pedal. then just flicked it? Like, yeah, he like jumped off and it. And did the bike keep going? No, no, no. So, like, he jumped off it. It still had the handlebars, though. Mm. And just, like, with the momentum, just through the, through the bike. And it was, yeah, it was quite majestic now that I think, think back on it. I was like, wow, that is did the you, smoothest way a junkie's kind of rolled up to me before. Did you meet John Wick on meth? Because that um, maybe sounds awesome. Yeah, maybe it was like John Wick if he lost his dog and then also didn't win over the bad guys. Yeah. Maybe it was like that that okay. situation, and then did meth instead of coping with his emotions meth instead by of revenge. killing people. Yeah, yeah. Um. Anyway, he jumps off the bike, throws a bike at me. I'm like, fuck no, I'm too tired for this. Fuck off. And so like, I walk around, and this guy. I see in like my uh, peripheral vision, this guy like lunge at me and I like jump out of the way and he kind of like falls in front of me and I was like, what the fuck? What is happening? And then he kind of like, he stood in front of me and did that thing where, you know, where it's like, can't get around me, can't get around me. And I was like, oh fuck, he's going to try to like grab me again. And so I was like, okay, resort back to the training that I had Back in Perth. It's when easier to get around them, by the way. Look, a syringe, and then they go, whoa, where? where? And then 
quickly. Look a bag. Fuck where? Yeah. Well, this is – that kind of happened. But pretty much he's like doing this thing and then I resort back to the – because remember in Perth when I – was a junk, like not a junkie, but a homeless person for, for those brief like four hours, three mm-hmm. three hours or something. Well, I was having the best news well, of my life. Yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. I kind of resorted back to that, and I was like, confusion is good here because they are not in the right mind. So for some reason, in my adrenaline rush brain, I just go, "Mate, it's not in the schedule." Or like I was like, "It's not in the schedule, Dan," and I just like said a name, and he just goes. What? And I was like, you're running out of time. You're running out of time. And he was like, what do you mean? And I was like, just by the grace of God, the cops come around the corner. And I'm like, fuck. The, the, I was like, fucking dogs. And he looks behind. He's like, fucking dogs and runs away. I just. Around the corner. I'm not saying I don't believe you. And I'm not trying to. Obviously, I believe you. I just don't understand it. I don't understand it either. I don't understand why your brain said that. I don't know either. Why would why? you spring up schedules? I don't know. I was just like, what's what's something I can I was I wasn't even thinking what's something I can fuse, let's say this. It was just like say anything, say anything. And so it was like the first thing that came out, I think because that day I was doing admin. So I was like, I had schedules in my mind clearly. <laughs> so I was like, it's not in the schedule because I was on my way to an appointment. Right. which was in my schedule. So I was like, I think my brain was like telling him that it's not part of the schedule. Either way it worked. You confused the shit out of I him. I did confuse the shit out of him. And then as the cops came, I like ran up to the cops and one of the cops got out and was like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I think he tried to like grab me. And they were like, that's so like, they were like, that's okay. We're on our way to get him now. Cause he's just had like an aggravated, like something happen. And they were like, did he do anything to you? And I was like, technically no. So there was nothing like, <laughs> There was nothing actually that he did to me, so there was nothing that I could obviously like report on. He should like he smelled. Yeah, he smelled funny. <laughs> he smelled funny. He had a, actually had a really cool dismount though. Like he so. needs to do community service and also someone buy him Rexona, please. <laughs> he was gross. Yeah, so they the the cops go, they chase him around the corner, and then <laughs> it is so funny to me that you said a word that had two syllables in it, and it broke his brain. It did. You're like it's not in the schedule, and he's like, "Oh, what the fuck?" Yeah, he's like, "My name's not Dan. What the fuck is the schedule?" Yeah. And then he's like. What, why am I running out of time? Yeah. What am I running out of time for? Perfectly you, into the cops coming around the corner. You probably had an existential crisis as you just running away like, God, what am I doing with my life? I am yeah. running out of time. He's like, what's on my schedule today? Yeah. Actually, uh, <laughs> he probably doesn't know what day like, it is. Meth. Oh, that's what it is. Yes. Yeah, Have right. to get to the meth. Uh, anyway, go into the appointment. Fucking weird. But then the week after, I am driving up the street and this guy is standing outside of the tab, punching the window of the tab, like trying to like get in. And like the, the owners are there like, fuck off, like go, go, go. And the cops come down the other side of the road. So he gets on his bike that's four times too small for him. And he's like. Is it like a little clown bike? <laughs> it's a, like a, literally a, ki- a clown bike. A kid's bike. BMX. It is a kid's BMX. I couldn't tell if this guy was 50 or 18. Like so he was funny. dressed like a 14 year old. And looked like shit. Anyway, this guy jumps on his bike and you could tell that he's screaming out like, you fucking dog, fucking dog. Full pelt down the street. This is a downhill slope. And he just, for some reason, he like flips over the handlebars, eats complete shit. And in the most, it was so funny. I'm like at these lights laughing my head off. Like this is the best this is amazing. Yeah. Cops come pick him up. He's like, he, I was just trying ending. to film the audition tape for BMX Bandits 2, you oh, fucking, fucking dogs. Dog. Why are you stopping my fucking taping? Yeah. Stop. The saddest part – well, that's no, that's not true. The saddest part about the story is the fact that the, he, the cops what picked him up the first time, then nothing happens to yeah. them. Then what do they do? Just throw him in jail for the night, wait till they sober up, then let him go. Yeah, there's nothing that they really can do until he actually does, which is horrible because it's like until he actually – the the reason why he was already – they were trying to find him was because apparently <laughs> he had actually tried to take a, a – like grab another girl 
So isn't that a crime? That's, that's assault. Yeah, but I I don't know. I guess it's because maybe he maybe tried the girl didn't to press charges or something. Yeah, maybe he tried to, and that's not enough of a grounds to be like because they, they yeah. he wasn't successful. And he's then, so bad at harassment. Yeah, it was like me. It's like he didn't technically touch me because he couldn't. Yeah, but like yeah, I don't know. It's like a murderer just like trying to like hit someone in the head with a pan and then missing and hitting the fucking bench and then just like he tried well no because attempted murder is a thing attempted murder is a is thing. attempted assault not a thing attempted abduction i mean but that's the thing like <laughs> it sucks you can't put away criminals that are bad at yeah it. you can't put away a bad criminal you only they're put away- so bad at it that you literally can't p- put them away you, for it you are so <laughs> shit at crime that we actually <laughs> don't want to punish you because we feel bad for you get better at you know maybe harassment. maybe they're amazing at it and that's why like they're so shit they're great Yeah, because you can't be like i'm charging you with making meg feel weird yeah like, because it you is can't. gross what he did. It's, it's gross. gross. You can't approach women and be threatening. You can't scary. try and grab but them. I feel like that's still a crime to me. You, you well, had, what would it be under the grounds of? I feel what, like the cops would have. What did you feel? Did you feel like you had a crime done against you? No, that's the thing. Nothing no. actually happened. So you when just, the police, because the police were like, <laughs> you just do we gave take some you down? An existential crisis. Exactly. If anything, I'm literally the criminal in that sense. I confuse the fuck out of someone. Like, yeah. like you probably sent him to an- another meth spiral, which is how we ended up on the BMX bike outside the TAB. <laughs> so I am running out of time. I need to win a bunch of money. In school, I think I might have told this on a really like on a episode ages ago. But basically, in school, uh, when it came to self defense, the boys and the girls were split up. And the girls were taught like a completely different way to self-defend. Dude, to I the remember guys. this day. Do you remember this? That our school used to run this thing where some, they used to get some jacked ex-marine, yeah. like army dude, yeah. to come in, and now he just t- like just makes bank from going around to schools teaching this like pathetic self-defense class. And all he taught girls was like kick them in the balls. Like that's yeah. it. Yeah. No. So there was so this girl taught us it was so i will never i'll forever have this image burnt into my mind and anyone else who did the class with me would also so there was one where they were teaching us how to get out of a guy putting a knife up against your throat Mm. and the thing that they said was grab the knife to the point where you were bleeding profusely and then bark at them that is literally what we were taught to do. If someone puts a knife up to your neck, grab the knife in such a way that you seem so incredibly insane and bark at them because then they're hopefully going to be like, ooh, she's mentally unstable. I'm going to run away now. That's literally their advice. And yeah. the guys were like, yeah, like, mate, just kick him in the balls. Don't be a pussy. It's not a, <laughs> it's not a bad suggestion, really. It's better than... It- Dan, you're not on the schedule. <laughs> you're running out of it's time. Not on the schedule, Dan. <laughs> or Dave. I think I called him Dave. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I remember from that self-defense class. That's so funny. This is such a weird memory that I've forgotten. They only really – there was like, all right, if someone comes at you with a knife, but they only really taught you like if they're holding the knife just – out in front of them. Which no one would ever do No that. one would ever do. Everyone would conceal it until the last minute until they went to stab you. Yes. There was like, if someone's running at you, arm fully extended with a knife, like, like it's a bayonet, <laughs> just like charging at you. They're like, all right, this is what you do. Grab their arm, blah, blah, blah. You just, and I was just like, this Proceeds is- Proceeds to do 15 step yeah, and tutorial like, on how like, to disarm someone I with a knife. I feel like this only works in a school gymnasium with a crash <laughs> mat. Like in an alley, I couldn't apply this. No, man, none of what they taught us could be applied in real life. Yeah. You know what the best thing of self-defense is? Just teach how people like athletics. Teach them how to run. <laughs> as quick as possible. Go use your arms. Because like no one ever uses their arms when they run. You watch people who have never run before. I used to do like running at a high level. No one ever uses their arms. That's what the class should be. It's like whole ass. 
arm up to the head. All right. <laughs> okay. Year 10. Today we're going to... Today we're going to be watching the Olympics. <laughs> all right. Now see how this bloke, all right, this Ethiopian guy, <laughs> 42.5 kilometres. He doesn't fucking stop year 12s. Do, all right? you, do you think... That a guy with a knife would be able to keep up with him. No, that's what we're going to do. Yeah. Now, obviously, I will admit, it helps if you're Jamaican. Okay? You're going to be able to... Genetically, you will be able to escape quicker. Run 100 meters, do a thunderbolt to the sky. All right? Then you get a Gatorade sponsorship, year 12s. All right? And then you briefly have a soccer career that fails. (laughs) I forgot he did that. <laughs> yeah, you'll come to Australia briefly, attempt soccer. It won't work out for you, your twelves. But the point is, you've evaded the knife. Yeah, <laughs> dude, just teach kids how to run. I'm sorry, but in life, sometimes you should just run. It, turning around and fighting is only for movies. If you enjoyed that clip, feel free to sign up to the Luke and Meg Patreon for all the bonus full week ready episodes. Yes, ma'am. Back to the episode. Back to the studio, which is on a couch. And leave a comment on the YouTube about my new jacket. Goodbye. (laughs) So we were in Port Mac and just before the second show, um, this like guy comes up, like old fella. And usually when old men come up to the, the merch, they cross their arms. They're looking at it like, okay, what have we got here? What what new stuff have we got going on today? Like, oh, t-shirt, fitty, oh, disgusting. Wait, is this the guy? Who, is this the guy who got mad that we didn't have tea towels? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, this is the guy. And he goes, oh, look, like you know, you don't have what I want. And I was like, what do you want, mate? And he's like, oh, well, we've just been on a comedy cruise amazing by the way and I was like that's good I was like who was performing and he's like well uh Hans the German was performing I was like I don't know who that is but that that's great and he was like well Hans had tea towels so you know <laughs> yeah, I'm no Hans. Shit. the girls that were sitting on the side were just fucking dying dying he's like they were like tea towels you <laughs> What is happening? And I start going, oh, look, like I can get you a tea towel right now. We do have tea towels. And he was like, what do you – you've got tea towels. And I was like, yeah, man, I, can, I can get you a tea towel. I was like, it will just be this T-shirt and I'll cut off the sleeves. <laughs> and he was cut like, him. oh, I'm okay. That's so funny. <laughs> oh, he was just going – he was he was angry at me it's the, no, that it's, I didn't have tea towels. It's the best example of you cannot please everyone. We offer caps, T-shirts, hoodies, stickers, posters, and stubby coolers. Yep. There's so many items to choose from. If nothing there pleases you, that's fine. Just walk away. But the fact – oh, man. Dude. But it's like, that's like the most old man shit ever, isn't yeah. it? That's also happened – Three times. Oh, you guys before. aren't doing adult nappies. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, how am I supposed to shit with that? And while also supporting Luke's comedy. Yeah. <laughs> People just like want the world to cater for them. Yeah. That's all I have to say on that. I do have one question that I want to ask you before the end of the podcast. Shoot. Shoot. Uh, okay. Would Lightning McQueen buy car insurance or life insurance? <laughs> <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> um, well, it's he would have to buy both. Uh, like if he got a nick on his car, he'd still have to take it to the mechanic, right, and get yeah. it buffed out. So he still needs car insurance. Okay. Also, another follow-up question. If someone opened Lightning McQueen's door and hopped inside of him, <laughs> would that be sexual assault? Um... Because they technically came inside of him. <laughs> Come on, I'm not wrong. Well, it depends if they jerked off in the car. Oh, you no, mean they came they inside ca- the like car? Like they came inside the car. Yeah. Like- no, I think he would be hollow in the inside. And then the eyes would just be on the screen. Oh, yeah. Well, there's no humans in that universe. I know. But what if it was like the multiverse and Spider-Man came into it, you know, and was like, ooh, a car. I can drive the car now. And then he gets in a car and he's like, Well, maybe his doors don't open. Mmm, fake doors. Yeah. Potentially. Potentially. All right. Well, that's that's it. Um, Make sure you turn up this weekend. Yes. Good. All righty. 
Goodbye. Goodbye.